KNST AM 790, and now 97.1 FM. T Lokes, happy, aniver- happy anniversary. Happy New Year. 2013's right around the corner. To get 2012 out. It's in your rearview mirror. Got a lot to look forward to, and a lot of troubling signs to a lot of people. A lot of experts are saying this could be a very difficult year. Uh, whether it's in the economy, worldwide events. And to help me go through the issues of 2013, I brought in my second favorite New Yorker behind my family, of course, uh, head of the Trends Journal, trendsresearch.com, Gerald Salenti. Gerald, how are you? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, the Binghamton bomber. <laughs> how are you doing? How was your new Christmas? All right. <laughs> well, I'm reading your Trends Journal. Uh, the predictions, and a lot of them, I, I remember looking last year, uh, one of your predictions was the secession movement, that w- w- it would progress. And you're certainly, uh, and at the time, I'm like, there's no way he's right. And you were absolutely right that there would be at least a progression, not within this country, but around the world. Do you see that expanding in 2013? Absolutely. Uh, already around the world, it's uh, you know, Catalonia is now going to have a vote. It's happening in Italy. It's happening. It's happening in about 200 countries, Scotland, and it's going to happen in the United States. You know, people don't want to see this for what it is. They're, they're wrapped up into their, to their belief systems. But the United States is unruly as the Soviet Union couldn't be ruled by the Kremlin. I mean, look what's going on right in front of our eyes with the, with the so-called fiscal cliff. It's the incompetence and the inept. So I'm a political atheist, by the way. So I'm not taking sides here and looking at it. I'm looking at both. You know, you could call them the D.C. drama queens on one end or the Beltway uh, circle jerks, you know, and it's a drama. It's a soap opera, and everybody's waiting. Will the fat lady sing? And so you can see that no matter whether it's the economy, whether it's wars that they've started and lost, whether it's the whether it's leave no child behind, whether it's the war on drugs, whether it's health care, you name it, Mr. Fontaine, and you tell me which one that Washington has succeeded in pulling off. So there are a lot of people that are hip to it, and they're disgusted with a gang of 535. That's how many senators and congressmen there are telling 315 million people what to do, how to do it, when to do it, what they should believe, and what they have to do. You bring up the fiscal cliff, and I'm glad you did. My question, uh, should we go – Not it's a two-part question. Should we go off the cliff? And I was – I mean, the deal is 10 years for $2.5 trillion, yet we're $14 trillion in debt. What what are they talking about? Do they, do they know what they're talking about when they're up there? Well, that's what I said. If anybody call in, tell me one thing that these guys know about, that they've done right. You're 100%. This doesn't make any difference. It's chump change compared to the big problems, and the big problems just keep getting worse. Listen, this economy is only staying afloat for one reason and one reason only. They're dumping cheap money into the system. You have interest rates, Fed interest rates, zero. They're giving the banks all the money that they need to keep this thing going. I just took out a commercial loan. I'm in Uptown Kingston, uh, the most historic colonial Kingston. I just bought a building on the most historic corner of the United States, the 1750s Franz Rogan House. I got a commercial loan for 3.25%, and, they, and it's locked in for 10 years, adjustable after that. I mean, it's, it's, it's no money anymore. So that's what's keeping the economies afloat. No, this isn't going to fiscal cliff. As I said, it's a soap opera. Okay, so say the fiscal cliff doesn't pass, which it looks like we have 14 hours, I think. Uh, they'll probably end up getting a deal or some kind of bare-bones deal. What happens if the fiscal cliff doesn't pass? Can, can America and the world sustain it? The world is going down no matter what. You look, as I mentioned, it's cheap money. You just had a new election in Japan, Abe. Brought back an old guy that did a lousy job before. First thing he did is he forced the Bank of Japan to start lowering interest rates. He said there's a currency war. They have to lower their, their, their value, their, their, their yen so that they can compete worldwide. You look at Europe, the same thing with Mario Draghi. 
They lowered interest rates, continue to dump money into the market, buying up bonds endlessly, and they come that with names like OMT, ongoing monetary transactions, all the money you want for free, long-term refinancing operations. Here, borrow the money, pay us back when you get it. It's every, it's not only the United States. What's, what's killing this country is I see it more than anything is fighting in these losing foreign wars, spending trillions of dollars down the toilet, coming up with these moronic new toys like the F-35. I mean, who are we fighting? What, what do we expect, an attack from out of space? As Detroit goes under, St. Louis declines. i got to tell you what's going on in Arizona with the housing bubble. The homeless... I just saw a statistic that came out about the soldiers, how many of them are homeless coming back from the Afghan and Iraq war. It's like something like 26,000. You know, so, I mean, it's insanity. And, and, and the definition, by the way, according to Einstein, is repeating the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. We have the, we have the crazy people in the D.C. asylum. They're repeating the same things over and over again and expecting different results. So, in 2013, get rid of the fiscal cliffs for a second. Where do you see American go America going, both on foreign policy and economic policy? Economic is more the same but worse. How, how so? Well, it, it's going to continue to decline. And, and it's more that the, the general feeling that people have now is just going to continue to decline from this area level. There's going to be a point when this bond bubble bursts. You can't, I mean, people are buying bonds knowing that the economy is bad. Once interest rates start going up, this whole game changes with the bond issue. And they're going to have to go up at some point. You just can't keep printing all this money unless they devalue it officially. And they may Here, well I, do I, that. One, one, one of your topics is bonds away. I saw. I have a question on that because not only do uh, people buy bonds, cities also purchase bonds. Do you see cities? We've seen some in the past two years in America, specifically going bankrupt. Is this is that going to continue in 2013? Do you see more cities with the amount of uh, pensions they have to pay and other government spending going bankrupt? They're on, yeah, it's just, it can't sustain it. it. It just can't do it if you don't have taxes coming in and you don't have economic growth, how are you going to get more money coming into the coffers? But what, these, what, the, what, the, what the mob is going to do, that's all they are. And by the way, I, I was the assistant to the secretary of the New York State Senate. One of our chief writers is Dr. Paul Craig Roberts. I spent six years in D.C. as a government affairs specialist. These are a bunch of crooks. They call themselves politicians. They're bandits. That's all they're doing is they, they have problems. They keep going to us to get more money. They raise taxes. Who made this baloney up? What are we, back in the medieval days? And that's what's going on over here, not only here, throughout the world. They call it austerity measures. Isn't that a polite term? The banks made bad bets. The governments make bad bets. You have to bail them out. Yeah, and, and you bring up a good point because we always talk about like you said, the mob, but, I mean, how would the mobs, I don't know, co cohorts, big business, where do you see, I, I saw a topic about fracking, uh, I don't know if our listeners know about fracking, but where do you see big business colluding with government in 2013? It's the same as before and more. It's a revolving door. Look at the names, look at the faces. From the media to industry, from from pharma to FDA, it's one big revolving door. Agriculture, you name the agency. Look, four words describe the death of capitalism in America. Too big to fail. That's right. In America, you don't, you're not too big to fail or too small to save. Everybody has the same game. No more. The merger of state and corporate powers is called fascism, corporatism. And it's a corporate takeover. Look, when I was a kid, there were no Walmarts. They weren't allowed. Everybody had an evil level, level playing field. There were laws in place to prohibit that, that they deregulated the Sherman Antitrust Act, the Clayton Antitrust Act, the Robinson Patman Act, and then, of course, the banking sector, the Glass-Steagall Act. So one after another. They've, and the reason these laws were put into place 
was because from the 18th hundreds to the 1900s, the robber barons were taking over. And they didn't want the robber barons to rape the entire nation. Well, now the robber barons are back in charge. And they have names. Whether they're Starbucks, whether they're Target, whether they're Walmart, whether they're Pfizer, whether they're Lockheed Martin, you have a few running the whole show. There were no such thing as hedge funds and private equity groups. Who owns these countries, these companies? Or countries, it's the same thing. <laughs> Uh, and to go to go on that, I I hear your reaction, I hear your emotion, and it's certainly valid. You talk about the ne next great awakening, which may mean every people in America are going to start waking up and being as emotional as you. Do you see that the great awakening happening in 2013, a similar to great the great awakening, uh, I think in the 1800s with religious and spiritual movements. Yes, it preceded the revolution, the awakening. Was the Part of it was that you don't look up to nobility. These people aren't any better than you. And your salvation depends on yourself. And then it became a religious movement. But for, you read the works of Thomas Paine and others. It's all in the awakening. It's about the individual spirit. All men are created equal. Not everybody has a red carpet for them. Who made this crap up? Every time these stupid politicians show up somewhere, they got an honor guard. Everybody, I salute. I'll give you a salute and a red carpet. They're supposed to be working for us. These clowns, you know, they always say they're public servants. Well, stop behaving like a public servant. I have some toilets to clean. Get off this high and mighty throne. And when more people wake up to that and the people find the dignity, the respect, the integrity and the courage within themselves, which was the awakening, they don't take crap from political bullies, little boys. That's the other thing I'm really angry about. And by the way, people say, oh, you shouldn't be angry. Yeah, I'm angry. They start wars, kill people. We have soldiers without limbs and lost minds and, and family suffering from the dead for fake wars started. And during Christmas time, May I mention the word Jesus Christ? The only time he becomes violent, the Prince of Peace, is to drive the money changes out of the temple. So if Christ could become violent, I could be angry. And my anger is these little chicken hawks, these little politicians with cojones the size of moths that want to talk tough. You know, we got to take out Assad. We got to take out Gaddafi. We got to take out Ahmadinejad. Hey, what you mean them? We? You want to go fight them? You go fight them. Let's go back to the way it used to be when commanders in chief led the charge. You want to start the fight? Lead the fight. Napoleon, Alexander the Great. William the Conqueror, what do we got? Little boy Bush and B.S. Obama and big mouth Clintons. Let them go lead the fight. Send yourself, send your wife, send your kids, send your money, lead the charge. Hey, listen, Mr. Fontaine, we have in the, in, in all around the world in these bases, all of these military contractors. Send your family over there. You really believe in these wars and we should be there? We need somebody to cook the meals, you know, heal, you know, help heal the, the wounded, to do the laundry. I'm sick and tired of people saying what we have to do. That's the awakening. One more question, since you've sufficiently scared my entire audience of the economy and worldwide events. What's looking good? For, just talk to me about a simple person living in Tucson. What do you see good in the economic future in 2013? Last question. The simple thing is to do as much as you can in your community. You know, practice the golden rule, but really keep it. start with local. Start with yourself first. Start buying local. Start growing what you can. And start, stop buying into the political baloney. And most importantly... Find the greatness within yourself. Everybody has a unique talent. It's called the, the, the purpose of life. When enough people find the greatness within them, then the, the entire society changes. That's what the awakening is. 
It's a spiritual movement, and that's not a new agey kind of thing. It's as old as ancient history. And there were civilizations that prospered, that were peaceful, that understood the meaning of life. And that's all this is about. We become dumbed down to levels where you, oh, I'm frightening the people. Here, I got an idea. You follow your politicians. They're going to fix everything. Start with the local cats. They're in charge. They're making things really nice. Then go to the state. You've got brilliant people running the show. And then go to Washington. Everything is going to be all right. Vote for me. Gerald, it's always a pleasure having you on. Uh, my listeners, they're going to want to know where to go. It's trendsresearch.com, trendsresearch correct? That's right. The New Trends Journal with the top trends of 2013 and beyond will be out shortly. So if you want to see what's going to happen and how to plan for it, and we have the track record that's second to none. And it's extremely comprehensive. We're not talking about four or five pages. It's about a 50-page book. That's it's, right. It's yeah, read. each one is is a small book actually, and, and, and great, great illustrations, and no advertisements. The, the, the best part. Well, Gerald, thank you so much for coming on again. TrendsResearch.com. I appreciate you coming on. Have a good New Year's, okay? Yep. Talk Happy New soon. Year to you and everyone. Thank you. You too. Take care. Bye. Uh, that was Gerald Salente, trends forecaster uh, from TrendsJournal. TrendsResearch.com. Appreciate him having uh, ha having him on. Coming up, we're going to be talking about the fiscal cliff and the greater economy. Uh, 520-880-KNST, 520-880-5678. This is Andrew Fontaine in for Garrett Lewis. Lewis, if you want to talk about what Gerald, call, Gerald talked about, please call in. Fiscal cliff, we're talking about it. I want to hear what you have to say on the last day of 2012. This is KNST AM 790 and now 97.1 FM.